know, in our scripture reading this morning, it's easy to be hard on Peter, isn't it? I mean, you're, we really pick on Peter a lot because he's coming at Christ with this arrogance that says, you know, no matter what, I'm going through. I'm going with you, and I will not falter. And Peter had no idea, did he, what was about to happen. I mean, everything that he had built upon, everything that he had thought was going to be in the future, was crushed within a matter of hours. And someone who was so confident was brought down to a place where he doubted whether or not he had ever even really known Jesus, right? He even publicly refused to acknowledge that he knew Him. Turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. And we're going to look at verses 33 through 35. Matthew 26, 33 through 35. It's another gospel account of the same interaction there. Starting in verse 33, Peter answered and said to him, Even if all are made to stumble because of you, I will never be made to stumble. Jesus said to him, I surely I say to you that this night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I have to die with you, I will, de- I will not deny you. And here's the catcher. What's the next phrase say? And, and so said all the disciples. So, you know, as much as we pick on Peter, it wasn't just Peter, was it? They were all ranting that, we, yes, we will go through. We, we will not falter in this experience that you're trying to tell us that's going to happen. But the reality is, I mean, when the chips fell, who was left standing? Really? Who was, who was with him? Nobody. 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 I mean, John came back eventually. You give some credit to John. He was there. But I mean, when it really shook down, when things got rough, and their, and their lives, they felt, were in danger, where were they? They scattered, they ran, they failed the test. Turn with me in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians. I'm concerned, brothers and sisters, that we are in a similar condition. I'm concerned about myself, and I'm concerned about you. I hope you're concerned about me. You know, the Bible says our heart is deceitful above all things, desperately wicked. Who can know it? And I think that is so true. I mean, I think we, in our minds, we think when it comes to the wicked falling away, it's always other people, but it's not us. You understand what I'm saying? It's always those other people that when this really, you know, when the bad stuff really starts to hit, man, that's a, that's a shame for those other people, but that's, that's not talking about me. The reality is, it is talking about us. And if we're not careful, we are going to have a similar experience of those disciples. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Here Paul says, examine yourselves. So I like, I like how he says this, you know, because this is, uh, this is so critical in our Christian experience. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are what? Disqualified. You know, it's very popular today to hear people say, don't concentrate on yourself. Don't, you know, you're, you're being too self-centered in your Christian walk. The reality is the Bible tells us to examine our walk. Make sure. Now, I'm not saying concentrate on your, your failures to the point where you lose track of the Savior. You understand what I'm saying? But what I am saying is we need to be real with who we are before God. We need to be so real that we lay it at His feet and stop playing games because the, the realization is that we are about to face a test that the Bible call you know, Jesus says, it's unlike anything that's ever been experienced. We're about to go through some stuff that is unmarked territory. And there's been some pretty rough things that have happened in this earth's history. I mean, I've, as well as you probably have too, you've contemplated World War II and, you know, all the things that have happened in this world's history, but yet that does not even compare to what we're about to go through. And so, the test, the trial that is about to happen 
we need to be ready for. It's not about getting ready. It's about being ready. That's the important thing. Turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verses 12 and 13. The fact that we're going through trials, that we will go through trials, is important to our Christian experience. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. Peter says, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. But instead, what are we to do? Rejoice. Rejoice. To the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. These trials, maybe you're going through trials right now. They're important, and they will, if we allow Christ to work in our hearts, they will bring us to a place where we can rejoice with Him. We can partake of an experience that He partook of. And and He says as far as that, when Christ is revealed, we also will be glad with exceeding joy. Since we're in Peter, let's turn back to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verses 6 through 9. Here he says, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by what? By fire. It's continue keeps using those words, it's tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So here it is again, this testing by fire, but what is the end result? That There's going to be a rejoicing, right? When He is revealed, we will be able to say, praise God, this is my Savior, right? But here we see that what is increased by the trials. When you read that scripture, did you catch it? What is increased by the trials that we're going to go through? Faith. Right? Because we're going to have to depend on something outside of ourselves. Right? If you've ever been involved in a trial where you just feel like everything is out of control, you have no control, that's where faith comes in. Amen? Mm-hmm. When you cry out and say, God, help me. I'm out of control. Things around me I have no control over. You're the only one that can help in this situation. You know, there's another reason that we go through trials. It's back in Psalms. Let's turn there. And this is probably... Along with faith, you know, a very, very important reason that God allows us to go through trials. Psalms chapter 139, Psalm 139, and verses 23 and 24. Psalm 139, 23 and 24. David says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me. It's another way of saying, put me through some trial, right? Try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any what? Wicked way or sin in me and lead me in the way everlasting. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. God knows the end from the beginning, right? He knows your heart better than you do. So it's not like the trials are revealing anything to Him. You you do understand that, right? But the trial is revealing something to who? To us. It's the, amaz- it's the gotcha moment or the aha. Sometimes people say the aha moment, right? You go through something and something is revealed about your character that